Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about the existence and nature of God. Now, can the existence of God be demonstrated? Some say that because God can't be taken to a lab and studied, we must not be able to demonstrate his existence, but there are a great many things that we can't take to a lab and study, such as wind currents, plate tectonics, principles of physics, gravity, and so on, yet each of these things can be demonstrated. How do we demonstrate something like gravity? By studying the effects that it has on objects in the world. This is a perfectly valid way to acquire information about a thing. From observing an effect, we can draw conclusions about its cause. This is also one of the ways that we have of demonstrating the existence of God. By studying the effects that God has upon the world, we can demonstrate that he exists. The easiest way to do this is with the universe. The universe exhibits all the properties of a contingent thing, but none of the properties of a necessary thing. So we should suppose that like other contingent things, its existence must be due to some external cause. This is a demonstration of God through the effect that he has on the universe, namely, by causing it to exist. Some people say that no matter what kind of evidence you bring forth based on the effects of God, that evidence is never sufficient to give us a full picture of what God is like, and therefore doesn't prove God as such, just a cosmic creator, designer, moral foundation, or what have you. However, the key point here is that it doesn't need to. You don't need a full picture of the nature or properties of God in order to recognize that he exists, just as you don't need a precise understanding of the gravitational constant of the universe in order to recognize that gravity exists. Remember, when you demonstrate the existence of a cause based on its effect, that effect itself proves the existence of the cause in place of a fuller definition of the cause itself, at least until you can get one. Some people say that because God is infinite and his effects are not, we can never come to a full understanding of him based only on his effects. I actually agree. However, we can know that he exists even if we don't have a full understanding of God or his nature, just as we can know that an ant exists without charting the location of every molecule that makes it up. Then there are those who say that the existence of God is a matter of faith, not knowledge. To that... I have to insist that there are two different kinds of matters of faith, the kind that can be demonstrated, like the existence of God, and the kind that can't be. How could something be a matter of faith if you can demonstrate it? Because even if you can demonstrate it conclusively, not everyone will understand the demonstration or how it works, or even have that information available to them. A person could definitely still accept something through faith because they don't understand the evidence, rather than because there is no evidence. In fact, most people do this daily. We accept lots of things that we can't verify ourselves, such as the identity of the president, the nature of distant stars, what our coworker did last night, etc. Just because something is a matter of faith doesn't mean that it can't be demonstrated. So, in conclusion, yes, we can demonstrate the existence of God in many ways through the various vibrant and powerful effects that he has upon the rest of existence. Next, is God a body? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.